Welcome to Tank Town. Welcome to Lincoln. Well, this one's going to be epic. I'm sure we're going to have a fabulous day. Hope you come along with me for the ride. We're going to have a wander around Lincoln. We're going to look at its history. Now, I'm not a historian, but I do like talking history and I like sharing it with you. So let's do this. Why Tank Town? And why is it called that? Let's start with that first. Lincoln, birthplace of the tank. One thing about the tank, it would have been codenamed. And the reason being is they did not want the enemy to know a lot about it. So they, they called it the tank. Hence, that stuck to this day. Now, there was female versions and male versions, would you believe, when they first developed it. And William Tritton was quite a well-known person regarding the tank. There's information on the board and there. Sir William Ashby Tritton. Behind at the moment is Tritton Road. I suppose after his name. You probably could research that, although I have not. One thing about the tank, when it first was introduced onto the First World War, it was supposed to be a game changer. And in as such, it was, but it didn't quite live up to its name first off. The idea of the tank was to actually break the enemy lines. There was a war of attrition back in the Western Front where basically the Germans and the Allies were not breaking any ground. The introduction of the tank was brought in to actually break that, break that line, the German line, and break through. And to some extent it did and others it didn't. But in the end it proved it's worthy. And many people were saved because of the tank and many people were lost. And to their testament to this town, if it wasn't for the tank, I suppose the war would never have been won. In fact, we know it wouldn't have. So, well done, Lincoln. Epic. Andy. So, from the First World War to the Second World War, Bomber Command. come to a place like this you appreciate what people have done for our freedom this is a fitting memorial to that the people who flew during the second world war and the people who have flown ever since in various campaigns and tours for this united kingdom for britain and for the commonwealth across the world when we look at some of these plaques. Just a reminder of what they did for us. That monument there is a very fitting memorial. If you ever come to Lincoln, it's definitely worth a visit. There is an element of calm, of peace, of quiet, as it should be. These trees all tell their own story. They're all the air bases, all airfields, and sadly, the losses of each individual squadron. And as you look, there's so many. As you look, there's so many. 
and they're dotted all around this magical place I must see all the people who died are killed in action are inscribed On these metal plaques just makes you think structure you see there that is the size of a Lancaster bomber one of the most iconic aircrafts of the Second World War let's go inside it's the size of a single wing single wing of a Lancaster bomber. Just as you get off the train, literally, you walk around the corner and there's a lovely Saxon church. The inscription there is all in Latin. Saxon in origin, and we can tell this from the placard down below. Fantastic and right in the heart of the city near the train station. Now we're going to go up one of the oldest parts of Lincoln. Lots of tourists come up here, right up towards the cathedral. One thing I like about this area, it's all quite narrow. And it's a lot quieter than the other part of the city, which is further down. And you've still got all the cobbled streets. It leads all the way up to the cathedral. And anybody who knows Lincoln, you may be saying, or maybe thinking, that's a steep hill. Well, ironically, it's in the name, Steep Hill. <laughs> <laughs> that all used to be rope. <laughs> right here, all the way up there, it's easy to find if you know what you're looking for that plaque kind of helps you as well but there is where is the remains of a Roman arch okay you don't really see it so much on this side but you can see it there it's all the Roman stonework all the way up so this would have split the lower the upper part sorry the upper part of the Roman town with the lower part because there's two parts to the Roman town the upper and the lower <laughs> Here in the area that lots of people tend to not walk by look under this arch all the stonework. That must have took somebody absolutely hours to do. But it's often people just walk under it and don't actually see. And if you look just there, there's a gargoyle. And 
And then we are to the cathedral. It used to be free spire. And they came down and the third spire used to be right up into the heavens. And at one time, it was the tallest cathedral, well, the tallest building, should I say, in the world. What happened to it? Well, kind of there was an earthquake back in the 1100s. I think it was 1100s. Don't quote me on that. Say I'm not a historian. Where the structure was a little bit shaded, so to speak. And it often caught fire. So the Normans, being the Normans, they decided that they would make a magnificent tower and the spire was wood and timber. And eventually with strong winds, it led into decay and it fell down along with the other three spires with it. And as it is today, due to money, they never rebuilt the spires. Nevertheless, still magnificent. Like a lot of cathedrals of the Norman period, and I suppose there are a few about the country, but it's very Gothic in style. And the arch is a Norman arch still standing. Part of the actual cathedral has been renovated since, and up until recently, and some of it is not Norman in design, and some of it fits the Norman period. So a lot of the church is a lot older looking than the front. I may add a little bit more dirtier stone. But there is a lot of cleaning going to be going on, so I understand. But it's going to take years. Nevertheless, I think, and quote me if, the, or if I'm wrong, but I think they're actually working on cleaning this eventually. This is a nice little area. I've never seen this area myself, or I've never really noticed it. Look at that stonework. Absolutely amazing. It's all in a Gothic style. This area of the cathedral, people look by and not pay notice, unless they knew what they were looking for. If you look up there, a little monkey with a stone mallet in his hand or something of the like. Or has it that that was a joke from the architect, stonemasons, and their little stamp or their little hallmark of what they did, their contribution. Gargoyles everywhere. This one is particularly interesting. From the UK, you may have remembered the banking crisis, where the banks were bailed out by the taxpayer. Well, people didn't think that was right. And people renovating the church, or the cathedral, so to speak, at the time, decided they'd have a political statement. Statement. And you can see, if you look closely, there's pound signs in the school's eyes, and a snake. Representation of the banks stealing our money. Now, whether you're political or not, still fabulous to look at. So this arch is beautiful, but it has a story. So what's the story of this arch here? An imp flew out of that arch. In particular time, there was actually two imps. Two imps were flying around the actual church, the cathedral, and they were flying around in there, causing havoc and mischief. One of the imps started throwing stones at an angel who was sent to deal with that imp, and the other imp, of course. What actually happened is when he was throwing stones at the angel, the angel turned into stone. And inside the cathedral, there's an area where the imp is rested in stone. The other one flew out the building, as we mentioned before, and now it circles the building looking for its friend. And they say every time that the wind is blowing, it's the second imp that's looking for its friend. And the football team is known as the imps. 
the Lincoln Imps. Here stands some of the Roman wall. And in fact, I think that was actually part of a reservoir, according to this. So apparently it was an aqueduct that went there. Now, if you were part of a Roman society and you managed to live in Lincoln, you may have been part of the Legion and gone to battles and this was a retirement area. So you could kind of say you could relax and enjoy yourself if you made it in Lincoln. It was a time to chill. Yes, it was still a heavily fortified town, but it was more for a retirement and more for leisure. You could say that Lincoln was the place to sit down, relax, and just enjoy the self, yourself sorry, in a nice spa and leisurely retreat. Oh yes, Andy. This is the last bit of the tour, the New Point Arch. Now apparently, this Roman arch would have been a lot lower on the ground. That bit apparently was added later. And this seems to be the only example of a arch of the Roman times that's actually got traffic in the UK. So there we go, an actual working arch. So thanks for watching New Camping Man. Hope you enjoyed that. Now I'm gonna go and get myself a bit of beer, a bit of sit down and see the rest of Lincoln for myself. No history involved, but there we go. The history bit, I've done what I need to do. Hope you enjoyed it. Now, one time or in the future, I might even do the castle, but that's a whole history of itself. So if you want me to do the castle, I certainly will. I think that's on the cards anyway. Yeah, do the castle one time. All right then, catch you again. Thanks for watching New Camping Man, Andy.